Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine. We're presented by the Navy Federal Credit Union. Navy women's lacrosse rolling right along this week in the updated poll. Number 17, Maggie DeFabio, number 23, joins us right now. And, you know, Maggie, for this team, you know, you guys were dealt a, a pretty rough hand before the season even started. Yet this group has bonded together, found a great connection. What's been the key to finding that connection against what's been a very challenging schedule so far? Yeah, I mean, I think just knowing like everyone plays a role. And so even though we had players get injured, like before the season even started, I mean, they still play a super important role on the team. And so everybody just working to like get better um, and play for the people that can't be on the field, I think has been huge. You know, I need to get over that initial, because your first game was against the nationally ranked ACC power. But as athletes, how do you get over that initial sting of, oh, my gosh, to, hey, we've got to get going because this team could run us out of the building if we're not ready to play? Just can you can you describe that emotional roller coaster that you all started out the season on? Yeah, I mean, definitely. You know, we played them spring of 23 and that game, you know, didn't go the way we wanted it to. We faced some challenges during that. And so I think. For the last year, we've had the Duke game circled on our calendar and we just went in, focused on us. We knew what we needed to do and we just worked hard for all 60 minutes and held on to it. So we, we get caught up in in scouting and, you know, what kind of plays does the other team do? What kind of you know ride do they try? But really, how much of this game is about you guys and about executing the things that you want to do um against an opponent i mean i think that's i think that's huge we often say um when we lose we beat ourselves because we get away from the game that we're trying to play or we get into our own heads so i think a lot of times at practice we'll say today we're focusing on navy today we're focusing on us and just making sure that we're working to do the little things right um yeah you know you obviously have been a freshman in this program at one point before um, acclimating the freshmen that you have, getting them comfortable to where they feel like um, not only are they on the roster, but they're part of the team and clearly giving them the confidence to contribute because you guys are getting significant contributions uh, from some freshmen right now. What's the key to that acclimation process uh, in, in your mind now that you're a veteran on this team? Yeah, I think it all comes from the team culture and upper class welcoming the plebes into the program. You know, at the Naval Academy, we have this culture surrounding the plebes. And, you know, that's one thing in the hall. But when we get on the field, we're all just a family. It doesn't matter what year you are. And so I think the firsties all the way down to the youngsters have done a really great job. Um, and credit to the firsties from last year because they set that example for us. I felt really welcomed in as a freshman. So then just giving that to this year's freshmen, I think it's been really great to see everything they can do. Obviously, you guys get together and obviously have workouts in the fall. Did you did you see back in the fall that folks like Caroline and Michaela and Felicia really had the goods to to really help you guys in some capacity this year? Yeah, I mean, coming in, the freshmen were all so athletic, so hardworking. So I kind of knew that, you know, they had the potential to come in and make an impact. When you try to – the other thing with players like that, obviously getting them to realize things at the Division One level uh, are different. Obviously, you had to make the, the same transition. And, and I'm sure recognizing – getting them to recognize how much it means to you all as a team – as your culture, um, is is that something that's easier said than done, getting players acclimated uh, to that? Because you know what it's like every single breath, every day, whether it's fall, whether it's spring, whether it's the weight room, whatever, um, there's a lot of meaning uh, behind that. Getting the, Translating that to them, um, how difficult is that? Um, I mean, I think – definitely the transition from high school to college is tough just because you spend so much more time playing lacrosse and doing things for lacrosse than you probably ever had before. So it's a lot of hard work. Um, but I think the program, we really just treat each other as family and we have each other's backs. So to go and work hard every day, knowing that you're working hard for your teammates, that's actually, it's pretty fun. It's, it's not that difficult. 
Yeah. With the limited time that is afforded, you should, I mean, look, I mean, when you're a high school player, you know, you can go out and cradle, you can do whatever you want. You can play wall ball anytime you feel like it. Here, there has to be kind of a, you know, a column A, a column B, a column C uh, as your day goes along. As you've built that foundation for yourself, what's worked for you um, in maintaining, obviously, tremendous skill as a player, but obviously balancing what you need to do as a midshipman as well? Yeah, I think I was I was actually just talking about it yesterday with some of my teammates about, you know, how little time we have. And I think the key is just being intentional with everything that you're doing. Like, you know, we go into practice and our coaches have a plan of like what we're going to get done, when we're going to be done by so that when you're at lacrosse, you can be focused on lacrosse. When you're at lift, you can be focused on lift and just making the most out of the time that you do have uh, so that then you can go on and be successful in other aspects of midshipman life. You know, you're playing one of the, the best leagues in the country. You've got, you know, certainly a couple of the best teams along with yourselves uh, right here. You know, you knew you were taking on a pretty good challenge, but now that you're playing it, you know, what's it been like as a Division One lacrosse player and, and being a contributor and proving to yourself that, hey, you know, I can play with the best that the country has to offer? I mean, it's just been so much fun. You know, I grew up around the sport. I love the sport and having the opportunity to play for four more years has just been incredible. So I'm really grateful. When did you know lacrosse was a vehicle, A, to college, but certainly B, to a place like the Naval Academy and being able to play it uh, at the highest level? Yeah, I mean, I think I've kind of always wanted to play college lacrosse probably since middle school because I knew it, it was something that I really enjoyed and I just wanted to keep going with. And then my freshman year, I decided that the Naval Academy was somewhere that I was really interested in and wanted to to go. And so I'm just really thankful that they recruited me and it all worked out. When the greatest coach in the history of the sport gets on the phone, comes to visit, whatever, and, and says, we'd like you to be a part of our program. How surreal is that, uh, you know, playing for a coach now that has 571 victories? Yeah, I mean, it was really surreal. I remember like hanging up the phone and going and be, and just saying, mom, mom, guess what? You know, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> you know, it's, it's been great and coach is awesome, you know, so just. It's really such important. a, yeah, I mean, I, I see the happiness in your reaction and, and reliving that moment, but, you know, I mean, I, I, I've lived it myself with one of my sons. I mean, it, that's a, that's a special moment when coaches call you, when coaches are telling you, hey, we think you can come be a part of our program. You know, how gratifying is that uh, when those people reach out to you? And at, at the other part of it is how do you sort out that process? How did you sort it out knowing that, hey, this was the best place uh, possible for me? I mean, I think I kind of always went through the, rec the recruiting process knowing that, Navy was probably at the top of my list just because of, you know, how unique the experience would be and all the opportunities that I would gain um, from going to the Naval Academy. So it was a pretty easy decision um, when it came down to it because Navy just checks all the boxes. But yeah, the recruiting process is a crazy time, but I'm just so grateful that it worked out for me. Look, you guys have done an awful lot so far this season. What's the key to maintaining what you're doing, even improving on what you're doing, and obviously uh, get, achieving the results that you guys are hoping for uh, by the end of the season? Yeah, I think I think the key for us is mental focus because we know that we have the athleticism, we have the you know talent, we've put in the work all fall to be able to go do great things on the field. But I think it comes down to every single day being locked in at practice, being ready to work, even though it's getting to be a long season we've been playing for a while but you practice how you play so if we just keep staying focused and practice good things will come in games maggie appreciate the time this morning continued success to you and your teammates with the rest of the season thank you very much